Well, hello, builders. We would love to welcome you to this episode of the Build Your Success podcast. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whenever you're listening to this. We're grateful to have you. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. Hey, if you're a new listener, welcome aboard. Here at the Build Your Success podcast, we like to build you so you can build others. We do that through our coaching, training, speaking, but we also do that with our special guest. And I am grateful today to have Bev K as my guest. I'm going to read her bio so you'll know a little bit about her and get some background before we actually go into the conversation. So Dr. Beverly Kay is recognized as one of the most knowledgeable professionals in career development, employee engagement, and retention. In 2018, she received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Association for Talent Development. In 2019, Beverly was recognized by the Institute for Management Studies with its Lifetime Achievement Award. Beverly's best-selling books include Love Them or Lose Them and Help Them Grow or Watch Them Go. Two wonderful titles. We'll talk a bit about that, but welcome to the podcast today, Bev. Thank you. Nice to be here. It is great to have you here. We're going to lead off with a question we ask all of our guests. What does leadership and being a leader mean to Bev K? You know, it's... Um having a belief in something, in, in what you do and why you do it, and translating the what and the why to others, um, other leaders, other followers, and taking a stab at maybe going in a little different direction too. I love that answer. We get a lot of various answers and unique answers to that question on your application, which you did several weeks ago. So it's a little different, but it does have a, have a similar similars. It's holding a picture of the future. And I think that's setting that example and a solid view of the present simultaneously. So right. it's, it's bringing what, what you're looking forward to and how you get there together. Wonderful explanation of leadership. And I, and I know you are a leader. You, you've set an example over these years as a trainer and speaker. So it's just wonderful. Tell us about the sixth edition of Love Them or Lose Them. Hey, how many, how many copies have you sold to date? What's going on with the book? Well, the book has been around, and I must say, I'm shocked, for 20 years. And um, the first edition was out in 1999. And, you know, at that time, titling the book with the word love in the title was taking a chance because love in the business marketplace, you know, wasn't that normal. And uh, we insisted on the word love because we felt it described everything that a good leader, a good manager does from recognize your people to notice what they do to grow them to encourage them to all those things you could use the word love as the wraparound so we wrote a book to help managers not in the theory of engagement and retention but in the what do you do and I think what managers need is the specifics. It's like thinking of you, I'm a construction guy. I just need to know what do I say to my employee and then how do I answer that question and tell me what to do. And uh, that's what I think I've tried to do in my entire career. Yeah, and as a construction guy, I, I tell a lot of people early on in my career, they told us a lot of a lot of negative and, and things that just don't work anymore. And thankfully, they don't. They tell us, uh, we only need you from the shoulders down. <laughs> or, they, or they bragged about, I tore him up one side and down the other. And, and I like to tell people today, it's like, really, do you want someone working for you that, that you don't that doesn't use their brain? And, and do you want someone working for you that you just tore down? So I think this is a better way to look at it, love them, and, and, and then you won't lose them. Hey, if you love someone and care for them, right. they're not as apt to, apt to go away and, and, and try to go seek some love somewhere else is basically right. what it amounts to. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Good. So, Bev, one of the other things you said here in your application is today's leader need coaching and practical tools that enable them to help their key employees thrive and learn, constantly learn and give their all to the team. So there's a lot in there. Why don't you unpack that for us, how leaders can help their employees thrive? You know, um, I think it's about um, n- noticing some of the key abilities that each employee has and and bringing it into the light and and checking out whether or not that employee loves doing that or is doing it because it's part of the job. And um, I think sometimes we have to do things we don't love And, and of course, leaders understand that, but knowing what the sweet spot is for your for each of your employees, and it's probably a different sweet spot for each of them, and 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 drawing that's my Jersey accent, drawing I can even say it, pulling on those sweet spot and giving people a chance to go deeper and learn more about what they love doing, I think is the secret of retention and engagement. That That's awesome. That's wonderful. I love the fact you talk about the key abilities because I think every, I know everyone is unique and, and they bring different features and different characteristics to the table. They bring their strong points to the table and they bring their weaknesses to the table. And if we can start to recognize that and help each other and shore each other up amongst the team, in my opinion, I think that's why we got to be careful with job descriptions, because if you nail it down to this specific exact thing they have to do every day compared to, hey, let, let them work in their strengths and maybe somebody else works in their strength and, and we complement each other. And as the team changes, those those strengths change, too. So you got to be aware of that and conscious of that and kind of fill those voids. Absolutely. So let's let's talk about the the in the, the words in the book. So. You highlighted a couple for me here. You said love. You know, of course, we've already kind of talked about that, the part of love them. You said lose, but you also say good and stay. These four words that kind of mm-hmm. are the foundation of the book. So let's first talk about, we've already talked about love. So let's let's move into lose. What, what's going to cause this loss? You know, I, I think now that... Um, Number one, we don't want to lose people to the competition. And I think we lose people to the competition if they don't know what's available inside. So I think if we're going to lose them, let's move them. Let's really um, do talent mobility, you know, at its best. And let them know there are paths within the organization that might fulfill their dreams. And so just lately, I'm aware of how easy it is for managers to hoard talent. Like this talent is precious. I am not letting him or her go. And yet the person is, you know, maybe topped out and and needs a fresh environment. So Am I growing people for the um, the enterprise or for my little part of the enterprise? So lose is has many connotations. And uh, good, I think too many organizations, when they think about retention and engagement, think only about their high pos, only about their high potentials. And I think we have so many wonderful, solid citizens in that massive middle uh, that are buried treasure and, and that we need to expand the word who's a good employee in, in all of our heads. And they're on the assembly line and they're on the board. So um, I think that's a the definition we're saying of good. And then stay is, um, I want you to stay committed and turned on. Um, Not just I'm there because I have to be. 
So it is the people who stay and their hearts aren't in it anymore versus those who stay because they really want to be part of that culture and part of that company. So the words meant a lot to us, love, lose, good, stay. And, um, and we're sticking to it. <laughs> it is a wonderful principle and, and easy to understand and recognize. You're very familiar words, simple words. You know, when you were talking about the lose part and then you talked about the stay and sometimes they just stay to because they have a job and they have to be there type deal. I was thinking, you know, sometimes you don't lose the whole employee, like they don't leave and go to another company, but you lose some of their potential when they kind of yeah. give up. They're not being heard. They don't understand yeah. there's more that, that's available to them. So there's also some loss just in capacity, if you will, uh, for some employees that don't feel engaged. You know, and now with the whole um, diversity, equity, inclusion movement, sometimes if that individual is so different from me, the manager, I don't see what they have to offer. You know, it's not visible or to my eyes or my ears, so I have to pull it out of them. You know, and I have to, of course, put aside how different they are from me or from the others on the team and really work to get to know what they have to offer. Yeah, I like that. And I'm, of course, the whole inclusion piece is also including people with talents, you know, in, in the group and using those skills and resources and, and taking advantage of the whole team and, and what they offer. So that, I love that. You know, in your application, you said that good or talent minded managers must not only hang on to good people, but they must also engage and develop them in order to meet constantly changing business needs. You know, I, we, you had a conversation. I'm from the construction world and I like to talk about how we invest in equipment. You may spend a million dollars on a huge piece of equipment that's going to be very efficient to make things happen. And yet sometimes employers don't recognize they got to make similar investments in their most valuable commodity, they're not even a commodity, but their most valuable resource is the team members. Right. And so this encouraging them, engaging them and developing them. Let's talk about how businesses do that successfully. So um, I wrote a book about the stay interview. And um, it came when we were delivering the ideas in Love em. The first chapter, and it's alphabetical, is A is for ask. Ask your people why they stay. And you know what's interesting um, and, and what you can do to keep them. And um, when do we say to an employee, oh my gosh, what can I do to keep you? It's when the employee turns in their resignation and writes up the exit interview. And then it's usually too late. And I say, I think the question is, what can I do to keep you on my team, in this organization, excited about your work? You know, what part of your work do you love doing the most? And maybe that's a question a manager never thought to ask. Or it's like, oh, I know, Brian, I know what he likes to do. And I say, I'll bet you don't know all of Brian and all of what he likes to do. And maybe Brian hasn't taken the time to ask himself, what was the best part of last week? You know, when I get up in the morning, what do I look forward to? to doing more than anything else. So all of that feels like baby stuff, basic stuff. And it's not, I think it's the real stuff that we all have to think about. Yeah, when you say baby and basic, I think about that, that saying simple ain't easy. You know, simple ain't easy. We, we have to really try hard to do simple and basic things mm -hmm. and they still work. They're timeless. That's just wonderful. So I, I think I understood you when you, you're going to ask this employee, what makes you stay? This is a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Is that the way I understood it? I think the the supervisor and the employee 
having to sit down and they're going to say, you know, why are you staying? Because I want to, I want to repeat whatever's working for you. Is that basically the, the tone yeah. of the conversation? That's the idea, right. So it's not in a group setting. It's a one-on-one, -on -one, maybe during an evaluation period. Is that a good time to do something like that? Anytime, anytime, you know, once a month. And the question can be asked in different ways. You know, what was the best part of last week for you? What was the worst part of last week for you? You know, what do you wish you could do more of? What do you wish you could do less of? And, and not that I can magically make that happen, but at least I've got some data. Uh-oh, I'm giving Brian that writing assignment again, and he doesn't like writing. Maybe, you know, I'll say, Brian, what about writing with a partner? Would, would that make it easier for you? So it's, you know, I don't want to say it's simple because it's not. It's wanting to learn about another individual. You know, someone told me a long time ago, and I told this to my daughter all the time, that Abraham Lincoln is said to have said, I do not like this person. I must get to know him better. Isn't that a great message to carry, you know, as you go out in the world? It is. Yes, it sure is. And, and, and what I hear you saying is when an employer understands an employee, what, what their makeup is, hey, what makes them tick, basically, and, and how can I help them if it's augmenting them with someone to help them write? That, that would be me. But Brian is not a very good writer, but and, but someone that can augment and help. And, and maybe later on, you delegate that task once, once you get the other person's strengths and realize this person loves to write, but they don't like to make phone calls or whatever right. the task or assignment right. is right. Right. and be flexible enough to, to use them in, in their strengths. That, that's wonderful. Well, I heard you on a YouTube video, actually, and you talked about the, the responsibility of the employee is to have the spark. And, and that kind of ignited me. I love that because to realize sometimes a lot of employees are dependent upon the employer to give them all the ideas. But I like that you said the employee should have a spark and then the employer should feed that spark. So talk to us a little bit about how you see that happen in, in good companies and people that set a good example with that. Yeah. You know, I think well, I grew up, you know, in a time when, the manager knew everything and the manager developed the employee and the employee sat back and, and waited to be told, this is your next move. Well, that was ages ago because I'm old. <laughs> and now we're saying, employee, you're in the driver's seat. You drive your career. You drive your life and your work life. And you need to ask for what you want. You need not to wait for your manager to tap you on the shoulder and say, do I have another job for you? You need to say, I love doing that. I'm raising my hand. I'm volunteering. So um, I think it's about being much more proactive, knocking on your manager's door. And if you say, well, my manager and I, you know, we just not in sync, then go to somebody else or go to a peer. But but build yourself a support group that you can talk to when you're frustrated, when you're upset. Love that. That's, that's great advice. You know, I just hear all this, these ideas you have uh, to, to in, increase employee engagement and retention. And I think it's so valuable. And, and as you stated, in, in today's world, it, it can't be, I told you so. There's got to be some flexibility. I interviewed a gentleman by the name of Frank Kendrick. He owns New Jack Construction. In 2019, he took his office completely virtual. And so that's what we talked about. But he found that some of his team members, when he gave them assignments electronically, they were checking the boxes. They were getting things done. And they, they, they he said it was the millennials. And he said he felt, and he felt like when he says millennials, it's like this curse or something. <laughs> but he realized those millennials were, were did better with this this working remotely and checking off boxes as, as assignments. It's here's this to do, do it at your leisure, get it done for me, thank you. 
And he found, so they asked, well, well, why do we have this policy in place where we have to have this hybrid organization? He shut his office down. Everybody works from home now. And, and he's saving a lot of money and the people are happy. They work at, at their convenience and they and they get the what he said as an owner, they got things done. And that was the important part is mm -hmm. people are getting things done. So I think that that assigning someone something and giving them the freedom to do it at, at the way they can. If you're able to do that, not all business can do it the way Frank did it. But right. if you're able to do that, that's wonderful. All right. Good. Well, Bev, you came, and I want to do a shout out here. You came recommended by Eileen McDar. Eileen joined us for episode 93, Growing Resilience, and she was a wonderful guest. And uh, she and I have actually became friends. We've communicated a lot since the, that episode. But, you know, that resilience piece is even part of, of this where you're, where you're working together and, and, and creating this. It's a culture, I guess, is what we're really after. Mm -hmm. uh, you have another book called Help Them Grow and Watch Them Go. Tell us a little bit about that book. But first of all, it's help them grow or watch them go. Or, yes, that's because correct. I'm if sorry. If you help them grow, really grow, they won't want to go. A and that comes out of my career work and the belief that um, managers need to notice the sparks in their employees and, and build on that. And employees need to say, here's what I want more of. And I think if people aren't growing, they're looking around. So, um, and growth means something different to everybody. And maybe that's another great question. Like if a manager said, look, I really want to help you grow. How would you like to grow? You know, where would you like to grow? Um, and uh, I don't think we ask that enough. Yeah, I have to agree with that wholeheartedly. Well, Bev, we have reached a spot in the podcast where we've got to wrap things up. If you will, tell our listeners where they can get a copy of your book. I'm going to bring up your website for those that are watching on YouTube, but tell the listeners where they get a copy of your books. Book well, books. It's on all the Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and all those places. And come to the website, and we'll, we've got a lot of great articles and handouts and ways to get managers going. That is wonderful. So on the uh, YouTube video here, you'll see the www.bevk.com. For those that are listening, it's B-E-V-K-A-Y-E.com. We'll be sure to include that in the show notes. So it was awesome to have Bev on the podcast today. It's awesome what she's doing out there, helping companies grow and develop their teams and create these wonderful cultures. I appreciate you listening to the podcast today. If you will, go to our website, buildcs.net. You can see the events we're doing, the trainings we offer, and share this podcast with others. I know that Bev has, has given some golden nuggets you can share with friends and family. So thanks for listening to the podcast today. Remember to build yourself and then build others. <laughs>